Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. My first question is part of the lectures that you have followed in the last weeks. But I want the one who's having that first question to apply it to the Zalando case. Who's having the first question? Finian is having the first question. Finian, I want you to illustrate how the four C's would replace the four P's to determine and measure Zalando's organizational effectiveness. So the 4P marketing model was a model that was used before to determine and measure Zalando, uh, organizational effectiveness. I want to make the change from P's to C's and apply it to the Zalando case. For Finian, the second is for Nora. The funnel model, implicitly you have already talked about it during that board of directors meeting. No, I want you to apply it very concretely to, the plot, uh, to marketing actions, very concrete actions. Very concrete. Three, who's having three? Olin? What do I mean? This is, uh, if you read very often in American newspapers, connect dots. What do they have in common? This is actually a little bit the story behind Zalando. Not the story about Zalando, but the story behind Zalando. This is for Pauline. Four is for? Janina. A double question. Key elements of brand. Well, what's a brand actually? What makes up a brand? This comes from the Schneider manual. And come up with uh, concrete examples. Because branding is key for Zalando. And five. All of these have been studied or at least mentioned in the report. Lohan. There were similarities, there were differences. Up to you to tell us a story about these companies. Okay, these are the five questions. I fill in the names on my Google spreadsheet and then we start. Now it's each for her or his, himself. Okay, Finian and uh, ladies, you can choose yourself. We'll start, Finian. Yeah. Can you go back to the first question for the audience? I'm starting to sweat now, that's fine. <laughs>
So I'm going to explain it a bit later on. First, I put down the points, and then I explain it a bit. Then, um, of course, we have to place as well. And the place turns uh, actually into a um, channel. And you can also call it um, convenience. Okay, then we um, take the promotion. That versus the uh, communication. And the last one. We have quite the promotion product, of course. And that change them um, into the consumer. Okay, that's um, actually basic the basic theory about that uh, about that model. Um, and actually, what is the most interesting about that is that uh, disease um, um, are supposed to make it more measurable for Salando because um, by only defining the price of the product, you cannot really. Measure okay, you can say I'm going to sell a pair of sneakers for 95, but what actually the the um, effective cost behind that? What am I, for example, what are my um, import costs? How, what are my costs for each single um, figure into the selling price? So that's then the cost in, in the price by, by defining the cost per model. Um, for the place, it can be kind of the same that. Um, Normally, company says, "Okay, we are going to promote our product. Uh, what's the place of um, advertising?" But then we take it um, as a channel. So, what's the measurement behind the channel? And the same for other ones is that actually the C's make it more um, measurable for the company, and uh, then bring the effectiveness and uh, the measure, measure, the measurable fact for the lander to make it in numbers. Okay, the last one. <coughs> Give a very concrete example about uh, the change from product to consumer. <coughs> yes, okay. Um, let me start a second. Say in all the marketing strategies to say, you know, like an ordinary company, maybe Adidas, they will say, okay, our marketing budget for the year is going to be 60 million. Mm -hmm. But Salando, they have a totally different approach. <coughs> they say, bless you, they say, um, how much do we want to spend on reaching a customer? So, how much do I want to spend in money mm -hmm. till you, till I get you to buy on my homepage? Mm -hmm. So, if you calculate it down around seven, eight euro, about that's what they spend for each customer. Did they say, how much? The factor X is needed to have a customer, consumer, and the end on our homepage. And that's the, the, the big philosophy behind Zalando. That's totally different to mostly all other um, companies. Okay, thank you, Finian. The next one. Can you Try to do something. 
I would say a brand um, has to stay for something. Uh, you have to um, create an image with it. And um, I would say for Zalando, they stay for their really big assortment that they offer a lot of products. Um, and different kind of products and um, you have the many options uh, to choose what you would like um, to have, like the size of the color and so on. And um, they also have to be, or the brand has to be recognizable. Um, that they, the people, when they see something, the logo of Salando, they think about something and ah, this is this brand. And um, therefore they have a pretty offensive advertising. Um, for example, people who don't know about Salando, um, they, Zalando had an, um, a kind of an advertising strategy. They once sent several um, letters or packages um, out in Germany um, to some addresses, and they put just a letter in an empty shoebox. Mm -hmm. And when the people opened the shoebox, um, they just read, "Here you can find um, the shoes fitting to that." And then there was the homepage of Zalando. And um, this is like people who didn't know about Zalando at all, who never bought something at Zalando. They were really um, irritated and thought, okay, where do they have my address from and all the data and so on. And they then maybe clicked on the whole page and looked what this is about. And well, yeah, this is how they make aware of themselves and how people recognize the brand Zalando. Um, it has to stay in mind then. Um, the brand has to be, um, yeah. How does it stay in your mind? I think um, Zalando especially because of all the advertising. Um, through the TV commercials, as we have seen, you probably don't step uh, to another program when this um, advertising appears. You watch it because you see how there's a story behind it, see how mm -hmm. it goes and what it is about. And it's pretty offensive maybe, and the screaming at the end. And yeah, this is maybe how they stay in mind. Oh, this is Salando, right? They have this kind of advertising and when they see it on Facebook, ah, oh, yeah, it's this TV commercial. and. Um, yeah, I think this is especially for them and how they stay in mind. Um, and they have, yeah, they create an image um, with this kind of advertising, but they also have to keep this image. They have to keep the image that they are reliable. Salando also stands for for pretty cheap products and um, free delivery. You don't have to pay for delivery. If you don't want it, you can send it back for free. And uh, it goes pretty fast. You can have it um, sometimes in the next day or the next two days. And um, yeah, they have to keep this image that they are cheap and reliable and um, offer a lot of products. And, yeah, I think this is also a factor for brand awareness. Yeah, that's it for this. Okay, I want to go Maybe, on on uh, the on the word thing. image because branding it's all about image building. But now, what makes up the image for a customer? I mean, what's the brand of Hazet? What does Hazet mean to you, students? Uh, maybe, yeah. It's, um, or whatever brand. When, when people, yeah, brand, for example, if you take BMW, you know it's a, it's a reliable car. It's not a car that uh, breaks down after three years. Mm -hmm. You can drive it a pretty long time. Mm -hmm. And um, you have, yeah. Good. Um, yeah, from the inside it looks good, and um, you have everything you need, and it's very comfortable to drive that car. And um, yeah, for Salano, they also have to create an image to their competitors. They have to be better than them. Uh, than them, for, especially in France, you have um, Spatou and Sarenza, which are pretty popular, and mm -hmm. therefore you have to create the image that you are better than them, and that people should buy at your homepage because you are the homepage that is offers the most and the best and uh, the most options and is the cheapest and the fastest. And <coughs> okay, you uh, mentioned two important things. Uh, is it indeed, is it good, is it not good? And what in the theory of Young and Rubicon is called, what is a perceived value? Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind that I have, know a lot of people they do not want to drive a BMW. They want to drive a French car because it's softer. And so the perceived value might be different from one group of customers to another. There is nothing, there's no such thing as the best car. It simply does not exist. Because if you will do interviews with different customers, you get different answers. Um, what you 
to say about uh, being better, maybe better is not the best word here, being different. Mm -hmm. That's branding from a customer. What, they are. what makes your BMW different from a Mercedes Benz, for example? Well, Salano uh, is different from, for example, I don't know if Spatu and Salano are really well, but Salano has the really offensive advertising and maybe the perceived value is that people at the beginning say, oh no, they are so annoying and they, I don't want to see that anymore and uh, I don't like it, but they are aware of it. They mm -hmm. get the attention and people, people maybe think, oh, when they see the, the ad on Facebook, okay, maybe it's, why not just click on it and see what this is about and even if they actually don't like it and are annoyed with it. But and they know this at Zalando, yeah. and you have written this in your report as well, and they believe that even uh, bad comments are valuable comments yeah. because of awareness, like you said. We touched uh, perceived value in the theory of Young and Rubian. We touched uh, differentiation. And it's one thing that is important to keep in mind if you create or want to create an image, a brand image, for a certain customer group. For shoes it might be easy because we all wear them, but is the product simply relevant to the customer? A BMW will not be relevant to a 10 year old boy. No shoes are, everybody needs shoes. But everybody needs shoes, so with regard to relevance, uh, for shoes it's more easy or it's easier than for cars for example. Although you have different types of shoes, for example high heeled shoes are not relevant to me. So please do not invite me to the Zalando lunch to offer me high heel shoes unless you know that I'm looking for the best Christmas gift for my wife. That's different. If you have that intelligence, if you have that information, you might do it. And then it becomes relevant. If I get all the time invitations from Zalando to buy high heel shoes, why I'm not looking for them, not even as a group. This is actually why they, uh, you have only access to Salano Lounge when you create an account. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you have to enter your email address and your name <coughs> and so on. And um, you do it on purpose because you want to use the Salano Lounge and receive some updates. And then Salano sends you the, f the fitting stuff that suits you. And, yeah. In theory. In theory. Salano Emirates. Yes. yes. Emirates, the, no, the new startups, ah, yeah. the yeah. company specializes yeah. Okay, Yanina, thank you. Nora, are you going next? Uh, yeah, it's question two. Okay, explain the final model and apply it to the marketing actions of the Salvador's table. Um, so far, from my knowledge is that the funnel um, model, very short, is um, it's about the level of trust between customer and the different medias. So how Salando is using it, and Salando is um, an online retailer and is using mostly online or uh, TV marketing for its own. And you can see the differences in the cost. We had one of our sources where it um, shows from statistics that um, TV is much more trustworthy uh, in the eyes of the today's human being than internet, for example, because it exists longer. So they always assume it um, that when you have big brands showing very often on TV that something must be true about it. That's like the feeling for customers nowadays when they watch TV, for example, and compared to something on the internet was like, let's say, adults that didn't grow up with new medias um, and only got to know it when in their 30s or 40s. Um, they don't click on everything they just see. They are always a little bit aware of the fact that something might be bad. And nowadays in the medias, you have always these um, bad um, knowledge about viruses, etc., etc. So internet isn't that trustworthy for them. So that's... Okay, let's, let's stick to the television campaign. Well, now what happens? You're sitting in a coach, watching a commercial on television. Yeah. Now explain the funnel model based on this situation. Well, um, let's okay. Um, for example, people who are watching, let's say, um, a history channel for um, for more about 
yeah, reports and animals, books, etc., etc. You normally only see advertisement referring to books, um, other history things, etc. You wouldn't see something for Pampers or whatsoever. So they already related to the right customer. And the trust thing is about it that they think when they already watch, let's say, something about lions, that when they see some the book about lions that is advertised, they have the connection that it's exactly what they want. They trust the TV that um, it's right what they see in a way. Yeah, but I don't get the explanation about the funnel model here. What happens then? You have not just one person, the coach, you have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands in prime time sitting in that coach and watching that same commercial. That must relate to the what happens in the back office of Zalando at that moment? Or what could happen? Uh, I'm not what you're referring to. You're sitting there, yeah. watching the commercial, yeah. going to where the commercial wants, to, wants you to direct to, mm -hmm. and what's next? That's, that's the very beginning of the funnel. Uh, What's next? You must obviously show the same, when you for example, go on the website, you must show you the same feeling that you had when you uh, trusted the Yeah, but that, that funnel, but, yeah, I you may not make just on the Well, I, I think that's one where you um, like have this really big, um, how do you say, what's the trichter in English? Yeah, yes, yes, go on, that horizontal... Uh, yeah, you know what I mean, like, yeah. they, they go, go in, yeah, maybe I brought up. Okay. <laughs> Okay, like they, we have this big amount that people go in and in the end there comes only a little amount out which could be like loyal people in the end. Yeah, so okay. So when you have feel like a big amount of uh, people coming in in the end only one would might come out. So in between you have so much more advertisement. Uh, it starts with that same mass advertisement. Okay, that's where we start. Now go on. Um, and goes on to like more precise things. And where uh, mass advertisement is always still TV best used okay, for. But now, so what's, the next, what's the very first stop, that vertical bar that you. What happens there? Yeah, well, yeah. some people are more interested and. How do you know that? They might watch. Um, they might watch something on the internet afterwards, or they click directly on it, get more information about it. But through TV, that's the thing. What they already said. You don't really know if people watch it. They. It might be shown on the TV right don't now, but know. people. Don't you know? Well, you could uh, have the statistic how many clicks you had afterwards after shown advertisement. For example, you have mm -hmm. the knowledge that was shown in 5 million TVs mm -hmm. and afterwards you have 40 million, okay, that's over, <laughs> let's say 20 million clicks afterwards, more than to the usual mm -hmm. amount of time. But however, still, TV is still very like rare for that science. People might just leave the room and don't even see it at the time when advertising is not. Yeah, I want to make one remark here. They know pretty well how many people react. It's not for nothing that if you see these sales channels that they say, uh, go now to the internet or phone now and hit code. Da -da 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 -da. What's that code for? It's exactly to know have you watched this commercial or not. Yeah, that might. And that code even might be different from one day to another. And that way they can follow up exactly who is reacting on the television advertisement. But you don't always stuff. have quotes in advertisement. Excuse me? So you don't always have quotes in TV advertisement. It does not always Or discounts or discount yeah, codes or yeah, whatever. But that's not always happening, I would say. That's like in a It's happening more and more or you can yeah. do statistics like you said. Yeah. But like in like let's say like would say ninety percent of the TV uh, advertisement you see you don't have a code afterwards you have to type in for get let's say ten percent. Yeah, because ninety percent at this moment are not having the intention to drive you at the same moment to the internet. Okay. Most are based, uh, are created to create general awareness. awareness. That's it. And maybe to guide you to the fridge to take a beer. Instead, <laughs> <laughs> Instead of to the internet. Yeah, I think it's more like, for example, with um, public shows like... Um, and they, they know, like, for example, they know exactly how many people react to the yeah. show. Like where you have to call for your favorite candidate, etc., etc. That's example. more happening in these commercial shows, I would say. 
Okay, thank you Noah. The intention is indeed to go from the very first uh, watchers to final loyal customers. By the way, uh, I use Translate Google now, uh, Trechter in English is funnel. Funnel. Okay. <laughs> um, next one. Lorena or Pauline? Lorena? Okay. Um, I have the last question. Website, so I will try to first to explain you the different kind of online stuff we can find on the uh, internet. Um, so first we have the specialized website who sell only shoes like uh, Zappos.com or Spartu.co or furthermore Mirapodo.de but we are also more general uh, specialized website who is selling uh, shoes but also accessories or clothes like uh, sarenza.com or <coughs> zalando.com and uh, yeah we have general website who is selling all kind of products and also shoes and at least uh, the shoes shop who are already in France or in, or in Germany is going to launch them on the internet uh, during the last two years, so yeah, we have those three kind of websites. I don't know if that's really the question of the show. Yeah, go on. Go, go very fast. Uh, the key marks, and then the, I want you to go a little bit more into detail. I will ask you a little bit more. I don't know what you want me to choose from here. Um, all these shops, they have a very strong, like Finian said, financial background. And it, it, this, uh, this is pretty similar to all of them. Um, now, what makes them different? Why don't we have Zalando in the US? There's a very good reason why we don't have Zalando in the US. Do you think that we will ever have Salando in the US? Well, US um, no. Okay, this was a guess. <laughs> Why? Because it's important. We're getting the, the, the bigger picture about the online shoe market. behind the shops what you see here because none of them are operating um, it was about the communication uh, a self-sustaining now I want to have the big picture about the shoe market not just what you see as a customer, if you go to the internet, but the business that is running behind, the business of venture capitalists, of investment companies. No, I don't see. I don't know. It's the part in the, explained by the CFO. He was referring to it. You mean the investment uh, which are in the company to improve their marketing uh, tools? Like all those companies have uh, really a um, lot of investors and yeah. not uh, they bond of themselves? And who is having who and what are they doing and what are they aiming? Javari, um. for example? Who is owning Javari? I don't know. <laughs> Mirapodo? But you know Amazon and you know Otto. Yeah. Okay. Lorraine, let's stop here. Pauline? Not so much 
So the Lando, of course, is a company which all the phones are related to. Samuel Brothers are the founder of Zalando. Uh, Zappos.com is the brother of the clone of Zalando in the US. I think it has the same reputation in the US as Zalando had in, the, in Germany. Uh, Rocket Internet and German Copycats are um, affiliate companies that help Zalando to create, uh, to create their tools. Uh, I think that uh, German copycat was for the for the blog, and uh, European founders is related to to the founder of Zalando because these brothers are were, were very, very well known to create startups and the, and after and afterward to sell them. Mm -hmm. And Zalando is the first one uh, that they still have and didn't sold yet. Um. What you tell me, uh, us now, and this is for the whole audience very interesting about online business. Indeed, the Sauron um, the Brothers have launched that Zalando uh, website. And the final intention is to sell that company. So probably by 2020, they want to be rid, get rid of Zalando. Long before. Like that Indeed, that will be probably quite not late. But imagine now that you are running a company and your aim is to, for example, to triple your turnover and your number of staff by 2020. Or your aim is to have it sold for lots of money by 2020. Your actions that you take in your management, your strategy will be completely different. Yes? Um, now I want you to connect a little bit more dots because you explained well what they all represent. But for example, why German copycats? It comes from a blog, yes. But why are the some summer brothers German copycats? Uh, because uh, they are because the fundators are them who have contacted the uh, German copycats. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. What they do and what they are excellent in, they are really famous uh, for that, is in copycatting. And I heard you say that the Zappos.com is a clone of Zalando. Well, it's the opposite. It's Zalando which has been cloned by the Somewhere Brothers and the venture capitalists that are supporting them via one of these investor funds, Rocket Internet, for example. So what they do is they clone a successful American site, very often American sites, although they're doing it with Japanese as well. They're cloning it. They try to create a big awareness about that new brand and its site. That's why they go for television far more than for Internet. And then when you have created the brand, they might probably offer Zappos.com I made a prize offer. You know, you want to sell your shoes in Europe? You can make enormous economies of scale by just taking over Zalando. Yeah, that's the price. My deal, for example. So that's what you're actually doing. It's Zalando at the moment is not just an online shop, it's an investment. And that's a pretty different approach. But what you said, what you represented was correct. But the dots were not very well connected. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do you have more questions or remarks? Then I would like to thank you very much for your attendance this morning and I wish you a very nice weekend. We have the last two presentations next week of Lavender.